Mira, yo sé por qué vos querés hacer este viaje, pero todavía no sé por qué yo tengo que hacerlo. She was taking a chance to find a better life. Aquí no hay nada para vos, Aira. Nada. He was caught up in a world of brutality. But when he tried to leave his violent past behind, his own gang put a price on his head. And he met the one person who would change his life forever. La bruja tocó con voz de miedo. Vas a llegar a los Estados Unidos, pero no de la mano de Dios, sino de la garra del diablo. Executive producers Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal comes the first film from one of cinema's most exciting new voices. Tarde o temprano Luzón lo va a encandilar. Vamos a correr la voz. Hi everyone, this is Suel Khari, the fourth flung correspondent from Egypt. For this video I am going to discuss a, re a recent film that, in my opinion, deserves more recognition. In fact, I'll just go as far and call it one of the best foreign films of the past decade. Uh, this film is Sin Hombre. And Sin Hombre revolves around these two storylines that eventually emer emerge uh, as both main characters' paths cross. Now, the first main character is a girl who reunites with her father and her uncle, and they plan to head up north and cross the U.S. border as illegal immigrants. The second storyline revolves around this gang member, Casper, uh, and he, he basically gets fed up by life and crime and, and, and the, because he's a member of a Mexican gang. And as I said, both storylines merge and their paths cross in a very interesting way, actually. It's almost like it's fate or something. Uh, come to think of it, fate does play a very important role in this picture. I mean, the girl tries to reach her fate, the U.S., and Casper tries to escape his fate as he's being chased by gang members throughout the film. Even a gangster, even a gangster who sends a girl to her death by kicking her, gets that same foot cut off by a moving train. Yeah. Anyway, apparently, apparently, Sinombre is director. Kei Fukunaga's first film, and uh, he basically, I mean, based on what, what I read, he researched for two years and spent time with uh, immigrants on trains in Mexico. He even got a gang member, two gang members actually, to edit the dialogue of his script to make the slang more authentic and realistic. And uh, and the film is is very violent. It's it's graphic, so I have to warn you on that. But it's not all violence and stuff. I mean, some of the landscapes were shot using a 35 millimeter camera, which is very rare nowadays. And so the cinematography is just breathtaking. And if you think about, it, it's part of human nature to try to seek a better environment and a better place and, and so on. So these characters, these immigrants or illegal immigrants, if you will, are, are very, you know, 
we, we should basically feel sympathy for them because they go through a lot and if you watch this movie you know what I mean um, if you think about the American dream I mean an American version of the American dream is basically to have a good job and a family raise a family and go home and watch film together and so on but a foreigner's version of the American dream, a third world country citizen's version of the American dream specifically, is in fact the dream of living in America. Yeah, basically, so enjoy the film. It's, it's, it's a must see film. And please don't, please don't attack me with comments about your views about immigration stuff. I'm not saying it's right. All I'm saying is that the act itself is forgivable. At least forgive it. Uh, yeah, so that's it. No, if but but not watching this film. Now that's that's unforgivable.